overwhelming as coming out parties go, so uh, thanks very much. Uh, let me run you through uh, a little bit of what the game is about uh, and show you some pretty pictures. So uh, for starters, uh, we had two main goals, as Graham just said. The first was to reintroduce Mickey Mouse, present him to gamers in a way he'd never seen before. Uh, the second one was to reintroduce Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, who most of you have probably never even heard of. Uh, it seems kind of odd to say, why would we need to reintroduce Mickey Mouse? He is you know, one of the most recognizable icons on planet Earth. Uh, but in fact, he has never been treated right in my mind in the video game. Uh, and uh, you know, he's most recognizable to us today as, I'm not going to hand talk about it, sorry, this, this is my turn. Uh, anyway, uh, he's most recognizable as an icon on a watch or as a symbol on a t-shirt and not as a character people want to, uh, want to be or even necessarily want to see in, in narrative form. So, we knew we had to uh, make it cool again. And so the, the first thing I ask everybody on my team to do when they get into the office in the morning is ask themselves, am I making Mickey cool today? And if the answer to that is no, I tell them, come talk to me because I need to find something different for you to do. Uh, the second thing is also a lucky rat. Now, we really do need to reintroduce him because he's been lost for many years. Uh, to, and I'll, I'll come back and talk to you about, uh, about him a little bit more later. The next most important thing we want to do is we want to honor Disney's creative legacy. There's 80 years of creativity here. Uh, we all know, we all grow up with it, we all love it uh, to some extent, even though some of us may not want to admit it. But if we're going to bring Mickey to a, a, an audience that, uh, that hasn't really thought about him as a hero for many years, we can't just give people Sleeping Beauty's castle and when you wish upon a star. Uh, we need to come up with something that's, that's maybe a little more relevant, uh, a little more appealing to a modern audience. Uh, and so uh, the way we're kind of thinking about this is we have to give people a, a new twist on things. We want to take things that are completely familiar to you. We all know them, we all love them. And then we want to twist them up, give them a little bit of a dark edge, give them a little bit of a difference. Uh, so as you play this game, which someday you will get to do, uh, what, I, what I want you to feel is, I've been there. Oh, wait, no, I haven't. Or I've seen it. I've heard that song. No, but it's different. So the whole idea is to, to the, the pleasure of familiar, and then we yank the rug out familiar. So the next thing is we're going to tell a big story. I mean, uh, if, if any of your game journalists, you know, I mean, I've, I've worked on 19 games, this is my 20th, and every one of them has told a story. I'm too old to change this. I'm not going to change now. Okay, so this was going to tell a story. Luckily, uh, Disney is a story-oriented company, of course, uh, so that wasn't much of a battle. But this other part, this player-driven part, that's a little bit different. Uh, and, you know, if, if you if you play any of my games or if you know about them, uh, it's not so much about me telling players to story, uh, telling stories to players. It's about me telling stories with players. Okay? So I want everybody to have their own experience as they play this game. So it's a player-driven epic story. Uh, next thing, uh, you know, I, I love confounding marketing people. Okay, they hate me, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, you know, I, I, I like making games that, that don't fit into the neat little genre categories. So, you know, is it a shooter or a stealth game or a role playing game? Yes. You know, is it a, a platformer or an adventure game uh, or, or uh, an RPG? Well, yes. Okay. In this case, uh, we took our inspirations from the best of, of those genres, platformers, uh, adventure exploration games, and role playing. And we're kind of mashing them up together. Okay, to see what's going on. Typically, when you take things that don't belong together, uh, you end up with something that's pretty cool and different. So that's kind of our goal. Here. And then finally, all of this is expressed through a, a new core mechanic, something that I've never seen before, something I don't believe in about games before. Um, we call it paint and thinner. So the, the core gameplay, uh, it, obviously, you, know, you run, you jump, you you know, you, you uh, do all that stuff that people do in every game, but the way you interact with the world is a little bit different. You can actually dynamically change the environment in the game uh, to suit your needs. You can draw and erase, restore and damage. Okay, uh, so that's uh, I'll, I'll talk more about that.
Uh, here's another one. Wait, we'll take it. So again, it's not that we're going to use these movements literally. I mean, we're not going to have you swinging on a giant's eyebrow. But we can use those movements uh, to get some interesting effects in other ways. Uh, and notice the, uh, the squash and stretch. I mean, this is a, a pretty radical uh, little, little 3D model. It can do amazing things. I'm not even going to begin to hint at what it can do today. So here he is being uh, a little bit of a scrapper. So you can see, I mean, we're doing a pretty good job of capturing, I think, the way, the way Mickey moves. Because Mickey, you know, the way he moves is important, but the way he moves is really what brings his personality to life. And then uh, this one here, this is a really good example of, of extreme stretch. So anyway, I, we've, we've done a lot of work with uh, Disney feature animation people, and when I showed, I showed them, I'm not going to Disney, um, when I showed them that, they said, go even further, go even further. So we're going even further. 